In India today's special broadcast on day 45 of the Russia-Ukraine conflict, I am Gaurav Savant and over the course of the next half hour, India today's biggest team of reporters on ground from Kyiv to Odessa to Donetsk will get you the latest as the battle between Russia and Ukraine intensifies with both sides now amassing troops for the second phase of this conflict. At least 52 people are feared killed in the missile strike that took place at the Kramatorsk railway station when thousands were trying to flee the battle zone. The eastern part has witnessed intense rocket artillery and missile strikes with Ukraine accusing Russia of deliberately targeting civilian areas. Russia has hit back saying Ukraine is trying to use civilian population as a human shield. But Allegations and counter-allegations continue. Ukraine is painstakingly gathering evidence of what Ukraine says were war crimes committed by Russian soldiers, whether in Bucha or in Borodayanka. International investigations are being launched to ensure that evidence is gathered. Meanwhile, in Bucha and in Borodayanka, internet services have slowly been restored and the restoration and rebuilding activities are slowly starting. As Ukraine redeploys soldiers towards the east and the south, soldiers who had fought bravely in Irpin, Bucha, Hostomel and in Borodayanka, soldiers and their families spent some time together. Military music played, not just war music or martial music, but also very popular folk songs to boost the morale of the fighting soldiers. I caught up with some of the soldiers, their families, and with the military and police band that played this music. Their effort is to boost the morale, not just of the fighting force and the families, but also the morale of a nation that prepares for the next phase of battle that threatens to be even more intensive and deadly. We bring you a series of India Today's special ground reports. There may be air raid sirens outside, but here the Ukraine army band plays joyous music, music to boost the morale of their soldiers. This is the Ukraine army band, which is actually sending off soldiers going towards the east to fight. Now, there are soldiers who are going to be fighting in the Mariupol region, and they have come here. This is a meeting with their families. You notice there are a number of families also here in this area. But just look around. These are all jackets of soldiers kept here, soldiers who are all going out to fight. The morale is extremely high. These soldiers now intend to fight in the east. And before they go to fight in the east, this band is a send-off. Soldiers are here, their families are here. The country was expected to fold in the first three or four days of battle on the 24th of February. But for 45 days and counting, they're not only fighting, but they've succeeded in pushing the Russian soldiers back from around Kiev. And now the fighting is going to intensify in, in Mariupol, in Donbass region, or towards Kherson and the south. So Ukraine says our morale is high. We'll not only fight to defend our territory, but they are saying they're going to fight to retake territory that had been lost in the past. With cameraman Lalit Mohan Joshi in Kyiv, Ukraine, Gaurav Savant for India Today. Uh, this Polish band, uh, today we support Ukrainian military as we, we play a uh, Ukrainian song transcripted for this band. And this is uh, to boost the morale of your soldiers who are fighting uh, to protect Ukraine? Uh, of course, yes. Uh, we pro protect Ukraine, yeah. We're proud, yeah. we... we proud for our soldiers. Thank you very much, sir. We представляем an orchestra national police in Kyiv's area. This attack is happening on the side of our army, which has entered Тяжку війну з ворогом, 
який зненацька, так як Гітлер наступив на нас, все повторило 70 років тому. Я з Західної України. Day 45 of the Russia-Ukraine conflict and the battle is intensifying towards the east and the south. With me is Maria Barabash. Maria works at the office of the president of Ukraine. Uh, Maria, what's the situation in Mariupol right now? The situation is very critical. Uh, the war is very intensified, as you mentioned. Uh, we are expecting a big battle on the Donbass and in Mariupol. You know, for many, many days uh, still, Mariupol is blocked by Russian uh, armies. And uh, we hope that it's still not caught, so it's uh, confer con uh, confirmed and uh, um, controlled by the Ukrainian uh, armed forces. But uh, for sure, the situation is very critical. There are reports of intense uh, missile strikes that are taking place not just in Mariupol but in several other places including uh, around the Sea of Azov and uh, attacks from the sea in Black Sea. How is Ukraine defending itself and what all do you require to defend yourself? Several days ago there was a big missile in Kramatorsk, so it's Donetsk region, not far from Mariupol. And we need heavy weapons to defend ourselves. We need heavy weapons from India. We need heavy weapons from uh, Europe, from US. Uh, uh, yesterday Slovakia gave us C-300s. We're very thankful to the Prime Minister of Slovakia for these uh, weapons. We need we need aircrafts, we need tanks, we need anti-missile systems, uh, all kinds of heavy weapons uh, to stop Russian and Belarusian aggression. Russian missile strike at an administrative building in Mykolaiv had claimed at least 30 lives. Rebuilding work at that administrative building, the destruction that was caused and the trauma caused to people in that region. India today's Mosmi Singh is on ground zero in Mykolaiv around traveling across to Odessa and she brings us a series of ground reports on the situation after that missile strike and a number of other missile strikes that have left that place completely shaken. Exclusive images of a bombed administrative building. Viewers, you're seeing behind me. This is the administrative block of the Mykolaiv region that we are showing you the building completely destroyed and destructed while the debris lies all over these images are uh, never before would have you seen the first indian crew to land here to reach here and get you these pictures that truly tell a story of violence and a raging and ravaging war we are joined by the public relations officer who's right here with us uh, dimitri sir do tell us you were right here your office is also in this building and 29th, it wreaked havoc, uh, a cruise missile. Yeah, my office in 8th floor, uh, 29th uh, of March, uh, a rocket, uh, cruise rocket uh, is destroyed our building. 36 civilian people died here and more people is uh, in hospital. 36 people were killed when, when a cruise missile actually hit. It was the early hour of, to the, of 29th when people were there in the building? Yeah, it's uh, in the morning, 8.14 uh, uh, a.m. and uh, they started work in this time. Right. They just started work. So it, the, you are saying that this uh, entire attack was planned so that there were killings, uh, people were killed? Uh, yeah, this is uh, the face of uh, the Putin's wars, of Russian wars. Uh, they bombing uh, civilian, and they kill civilian. Uh, and uh, this uh, is every time, every day uh, in our country. Right. Every time, every day, that's the story that this building is telling. It's very precariously placed. Uh, you can see that there's debris lying over, all over. Uh, the, this is a cupboard that's lying over here. Um, paperwork, lots of paperwork, some blankets uh, that you can see. And 
all this debris, a lot of paperwork is what we see here. And was it a residential year? You can see a jacket that's lying. It's a story of death and destruction, a story that uh, that really is nerve wracking uh, with so much of uh, so many buildings bombed. And in, in fact, these are all infrastructural buildings that are being attacked. Uh, yeah, they bombing civilian attack and, uh, and uh, destroyed uh, uh, all infrastructure, civilian infrastructure and logistic infrastructure. They want uh, to destroy it like in Mariupol and in Bucha and other uh, cities of uh, Donbass. They do it this uh, last uh, eight years. So just have a look up, just have a look up, and if you look at the high top, they are, the entire building has been ripped, as if it's been ripped from the middle, and you can see that the cupboards are hanging, lots of stuff, wires and cables hanging, a window that's hanging in the air, and all the debris has been pushed uh, aside uh, here. Uh, you know, perhaps uh, they wanted to paralyze the entire administration uh, here like they did in Kherson because this is the last barrier that they are looking at to penetrate the impregnable uh, Odessa and that's one reason that you can see a, a very aggressive attack by the Russian troops right here on Ground Zero in Mykolaiv. With video journalist Parminder Sharma, this is Moss Missing in Mykolaiv, Ukraine for India Today. This is a fight to the finish. Now, India Today's foreign affairs editor Geeta Mohan is in Donetsk and she's covering the story from the Russian side. The information we are getting is that Ukrainian forces launched a series of very intense artillery attacks and the impact that they've had on ground on the other side. Geeta Mohan with this report in Donetsk. This is one of the forward posts of a bunker here where uh, the soldier has taken position and has been monitoring situation outside because there is movement. So you can hear uh, them trying to ensure that uh, the movement over there is contained. Uh, there are other soldiers who've moved to the front to take on the Ukrainian forces. But this is uh, one of the forward bases. These are the reserves. They stay at the back and ensure that they give that they give protection to the soldiers who are now out up in the front uh, taking on the Ukrainian soldiers. Uh, we've been asked to bend and walk in these trenches because some of the breastwork, some of the, uh, the, the plywood that has been put is, uh, is way lower than, than, than our helmets. So the helmets should not be visible because there is an active gunfire and gunfight that is underway between the Ukrainian forces and the Russian Donetsk forces. This is the field between Marinka and what is the border of Donetsk right now where the Russian and, Ukra and, and Donetsk forces are. A Ukrainian attack four days ago created this crater. The impact and the severity of the attack can be seen and felt with the size of the crater. If only this were to hit the other side where the forces are, this could have severely damaged the Russian and Donetsk forces, but it fell on the land here. Uh, we do not really know whether if it was a missile, a rocket, uh, or, or for that matter, uh, a bomb. Uh, do not know what really hit this place, but it was an attack by the Ukrainian forces. And this is the damage that uh, an attack from the other side. Can you explain what was the action that we saw just a while ago? What's happening at, atop this this Bunker that we are in. Можете ли прокомментировать, что происходит сейчас? То есть там идет захват территории, продвижение вперед или что? Где были корреспонденты? Да, идет на сегодняшний день продвижение украинских военных. Я их не назову военных, а террористами, боевиками, так как они they getting back our territory, as we see, they pushing back Ukrainians, and he don't want to call them soldiers, he calls them terrorists because of actions they do. And that's the action that we saw just a while ago, that's real combat happening right now? So now the process is happening right now. 
Да. Right, right. It's going on. Uh, very important area uh, in terms of strategic position. Uh, what is the uh, what is the larger plan of the forces to uh, control and take control of Marinka because that has been one of the toughest challenges. What, according to him, are the challenges? Какие еще у нас есть вызовы? То есть взять Маринку – это большое дело. Какие еще вы видите в дальнейшие ходы, в дальнейшие какие-то продвижения наши, по вашему мнению? Ну, дальше, 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 вперед забирать полностью наши земли, которые по праву принадлежат Донецкой Народной Республике. So he, he uh, wants to keep move on forward and forward until we take all of the territory of Donetsk Republic. At the border, right in front of Marinka, between Marinka and what the front line right now is for the Donetsk and Russian forces, this position over here has been given up. The trenches and the forward bases have been moved forward. We will be going there in some time from now to tell you exactly what the position is. There's massive gunfight that's on between the Ukrainian and the Russian Donetsk forces on this side uh, to, to ensure that Marinka is captured. Ukrainian forces giving a very tough fight, not giving up on Marinka. With the journalist Satya Rautre at the border, Geeta Mohan for India Today. So there are two aspects to the story in Ukraine. As people in and around Kyiv prepare to rebuild their lives and localities, people in the south and the east are preparing for the worst. They are preparing for the second phase of this conflict that threatens to be far more severe than what the first phase was. India Today will continue to report from Ground Zero, but that is all. Camera person Lalit Mohan Joshi and I have for you on this special broadcast from Kyiv, Ukraine. Many thanks for watching.